Welcome to Smuggles and Squibs and her wands by Alvin. As you guys know, Harry Potter is filled with magic, but magic sometimes can be tricky, but magic sometimes can also make absolutely no sense, or sometimes you just don't understand it at all. In this video, we are going to talk about everything in Harry Potter that doesn't make sense, or sometimes you just don't understand it at all. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome to my wand shop. Make sure to subscribe for more Harry Potter related content. I post every Thursday, so be on the lookout for a brand new video. And I just wanna say we are so close to 100 subscribers. So if you guys can get me there, I would so very greatly much appreciate it. And we can have a mini celebration when we hit it. So again, thank you guys for your support. Hopefully soon we will hit 100 subscribers. So be on the lookout for a celebratory video. Now without f further ado, let's get on to the video. For me per personally, I have written down before major things that don't make sense to me or I just don't understand. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't pick five since I always do top five or five things. Well, I just thought that these four are like the main components of some things that are just a little bit of a head scratcher to me. Number one on the list for me is going to be the Tri-Wizard Tournament. Now in the books and in the movies, they have described it multiple times as um, a tournament to compete uh, of which wizard school is the best. Now, just based off that, why do you guys need to compete to show off who's the best? Isn't the whole point of, of wizarding school to learn magic and prepare you for what's up ahead in your life and to become an aura or a healer or whatever you want to do or proceed within your wizarding life. Now, of course, the Triwizard Tournament was sort of canceled for a couple hundred years, but then Dumbledore brought it back because he thought that everyone would be would be safe and everyone sort of wanted to make amends. You guys know that the Triwizard Tournament concedes of three wizards from each school. So one so one from Bu Battens, one from Durmstrang, and one from Hogwarts. Now of course we know our three champions as Fleur, Victor, and Cedric. But of course um, Moody had to work his magic and put Harry into the goblet. Now what I don't understand is why hold the Triwizard Tournament at all? Why would you put your students, which makes up your school, in perilous danger? And why would the students give up their life, risk their life, to fight off mermaids, to maybe get swallowed in a maze? And why would a student think that fighting a dragon that breathes fire and that may or may not kill them is a fantastic idea to show their heroism or their bravery. I just think that it is overall redundant and superfluous and I don't think that the Triwizard Tournament should be held at all again for as long as magic shall live. Um, of course due to the death of my fellow Hufflepuff Cedric. Um, that's all I gotta say. It was a horrible idea from the start and hopefully it never happens again. Next up on my list is Wand Cores. Now, both in the books and in the movies, we are only known to four wand cores, which are unicorn hair, dragon heartstring, and phoenix feather, and the very rare vela hair. Thing that's a little bit mind boggling to me is why aren't there more? Why are they only subjected to four wand cores? And it's sort of strange to think that there are more wand makers than just Ollivanders and Grigorovich. There are also wand makers all around the world in France, in Dermestrang, and I kind of wonder, did they only use the four wand cores? And I wonder, did they only use the four wand cores that we know of, or are there more that we may not know about? Maybe they use goblin hair, or um, hippogriff feather, or um, some other crazy in ingredients to make wands. Also, wand cores really show um, people's determination in life. So I feel like maybe more wand cores should really be um, more discussed upon. For the penultimate one, one, we're going to discuss chocolate frogs. Now, of course, ch chocolate frogs are pretty self-explanatory. There are frogs made out of chocolate. In the first movie, we see Harry first encounter a chocolate frog and a famous witch or wizard card. Now, when Harry opens his chocolate frog card, we see that, that the frog immediately jumps 
toward the window and then out of the window. And Ron says to him that they only have one good jump left in them anyways. But what's kind of strange to me is why make a food that is enchanted for it to hop away? I myself would get super furious if I bought something with my own money and it just hopped away from me. Like it's a little bit, you know, frustrating, but also confusing. Like, why is that a thing? Why is that such a fantastic idea that you would sell it out to other witches and wizards in the wizarding community? It's so just like, it doesn't make any sense. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Continuing on with the chocolate frog things that I don't understand is that with every chocolate frog comes a famous witch or wizard card. Harry pulled his first one out and it appeared to be Dumbledore. Now, of course, we see the portrait of Dumbledore on the chocolate frog card, but after a few minutes, we see that his portrait is gone and Ron says, you don't expect him to be there forever. And one thing that's like, what to me is, why was he there in the first place? Where did he go? I am like, that doesn't make any sense. And why did Dumbledore go there in the first place? Where did he have to go? How did he even get to that portrait? Like, I feel like there's so many questions that need to be cleared up about the famous witch or wizard card brought upon in the chocolate frog card. For the last one, I want to talk about Voldemort. Yes, AKA Tom Red Voldemort, AKA the Dark Lord. Wow, he had a lot of names. As we all know, Voldemort became immortal through his Horcruxes. But after Harry and his fr friends found all seven of them, he was ultimately defeated in the Battle of Hogwarts. One thing that I don't understand is Voldemort was obsessed with power and he wanted to live as long as possible to maintain that power. Now he did have a potions master right next to him, which is of course Snape. And in the first book and movie, Snape said to his whole class, I can teach you how to brew fame, bottle glory, and even put a stopper to death. The thing that the thing that's not clicking in my mind is if Voldemort wanted to live as long as possible, why not ask Snape to make that potion for him so that he can't die? It's crazy to me how Voldemort wanted power so bad he was blinded by the possibility that there was a simple little potion that a potions master who was his so-called friend could make for him in a heartbeat. But as we all know, Voldemort was not the sharpest tool in the shed, but he was definitely a tool. That's gonna do it for today's video. Those were the things that I did not understand about the Harry Potter universe. Hopefully you guys may have some of your own, but if you do have any of your own, feel free to leave them down in the comments down below. But of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. But as always, keep your wands up at the ready, always.